Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ 30 and 31. Therapy quote number 30. Projection may be defined as the tendency to attribute falsely to other people motives or traits that are our own or that in some way explain or justify our own. Mope beam projection might be defined as the process of exaggerating qualities in other people in which they and we possess, though we may not realize that we possess them. Mope beam projection is a kind of perceptual accentuation. We see more than is there. So the last video talked about projective identification and I mentioned that that specific defense mechanism will be a thread throughout the series. Um, defense mechanisms in general uh, will also be a thread throughout the series and projection is uh, one of the one of the common defense mechanisms. There's there seems to be a little confusion it seems to me about it a little bit when we say that somebody's projecting we I think we tend to assume um, that it's 100% that the other person doesn't possess some of the trait that they're being accused of. Um, so, so for example, if uh, George has a certain idea or motive or belief or whatever or feeling, and it's fully his, but he's not maybe fully aware of it, and then he sees in the other person maybe some little aspect that corresponds to this to his unconscious belief or motive or feeling then there'll be so that's the moat and then he he carries the beam so there'll be this beam he'll um, exaggerate the little thing that he just saw in the other person so that he can talk about the unconscious feeling trait motive belief that he's not really fully aware of, of himself so in the self-help movement we, there's a slogan that uh, that he's helped the person you're projecting is actually indirectly helping you he's a bit of a mirror he's, he's pointing to all this that you're denying in yourself and you can notice it by your strong um, judgment against that person so it may be true he may have like a little bit he may share your belief like maybe one percent uh, you know, and you but you share, but you possess that belief. You know, ninety percent, let's say, <laughs> um, but you don't know it. So you see that one percent, and suddenly you say he's got the ninety percent or the one hundred percent. So you you blow it out of proportion, and that's called the, the moat beam projection. Um, another way of putting it is TQ thirty one. The projector does not create tormentors out of the blue. He seizes upon tiny clues in the other person's behavior, minor indications of the same unconscious wishes the projector is defending against. Then the projector magnifies their significance unrealistically by focusing all of his attention upon them and discounting all the major personality characteristics of the other person. It is analogous to the way a spotted dirt on the door changes the appearance of a new car. I debated whether or not to include this little analogy here. It seemed so far out because um, um, I, th I don't think many people would really discount or Feel that the car is very different because of a little speck on the on the on the door or something. But then I thought about it. What he was doing was he's he's emphasizing the absurdity of um, most of our projections. How they're so blown out, like so blown out of proportion. It's his his comparison is it'd be like somebody seeing a speck of dust on the door, and suddenly this wonderful new car is suddenly a, an undesirable junk or something you know <laughs> it's just crazy but he, 
projection has a similar kind of remember defense mechanisms distort reality right to deal with the person's anxiety so projection distorts reality um, right but but the but again the the, the lesson in, in projection is that it, it's that's what the whole shadow work movement uh, was about in the 90s I think there was a lot of talk about owning your projections a typical self-help exercise was you know think about somebody you don't like tell me five things why you don't like this person now go to the mirror you're looking at those five things <laughs> Robert Bly has a lot of little metaphors and analogies about shadow work and uh, yeah, Robert Bly's name will, will come up. Uh, actually, his name has already come up a few times. He's the one that said, forgive psychology or its jargon. <laughs> Just forgive it. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember the original context of, of when I first heard of why it made me <laughs> But every time I remember it, I, I unconsciously re remember why it was funny at that time. But I don't remember now why it was funny. So funny. <laughs> Maybe he was going on and on about something and and maybe the audience was kind of rolling their eyes about the jargon that was be, being used. In a typical Robert Bly fashion, he just said, Oh, just give for I called you for his jargon. Just for <laughs> Robert Bly, by the way, in case you haven't heard his name, he, he was sort of the unofficial leader of the men's movement. This is a time when men started realizing that that um, you know they started asking the question what does it really mean to be a man what, 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 what is so the confusion about that and Bly, Bly and others came along and said well no no men are caring they're generative they're they're not uh, the stereotypical uh, thoughts about them from from the past that's not that's the distorted man or the regressive man or the toxic masculinity all all that that all that's you know um, that's a different topic i guess i just wanted to mention briefly um that anyways robert Bly is the guy that has it has and still is teaching us about how to withdraw our projections right because projections distort reality right and if we withdraw, if we own our projections, then we're restoring our inner reality and outer reality, and we're moving towards wholeness. Um, and that's part of the therapeutic task: is to own our different parts, to integrate it. So our ego integrates all of these different parts. Um, you know, while I'm on this topic, um, something that just something I forgot to mention in an earlier video. In an earlier video, I played the introduction, uh, Bruce, Springsteen introdu Bruce Springsteen's introduction to one of his songs. And in that introduction, he, he explained that he um, had bad feelings about his uh, dad for a long time. And then he, and then he came to realize he's a human being and had he, he had his hopes and dreams and things didn't pan out and he had to make compromises. And, but there were some benefits to this because the father was a buffer from his grandfather. And he saw he's such just a regular person. So he started to integrate all these things by doing his research and self-exploration. Uh, Springsteen, as if you don't know, he's very open about his experiences with the therapist and seeing the therapist and all that. So it's pu very public about that. And, um, and I forgot to mention that song, that, that intro was for a song entitled, can you guess what the title was? The song's title was Independence Day. He meant his independence. He cut the umbilical, the psychic umbilical cord, right, to his parents, finally. Because uh, that's that's what he meant by the Independence Day. It's his personal, emotional, psychic independence. doesn't mean he necessarily has to physically live apart from his parents. Maybe they're still under the same duplex or whatever, I don't know, <laughs> it's not about physical, it's about the, the psychic uh, connection, right? Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, and, and, and owning our projections is part of that shadow work, it's part of that uh, ego work to, to know ourselves, 
So the person who's who's engaged in mope beam projection, you know, that's that's almost that's very close to splitting. Like like you're so disconnected from what you're feeling, and you just split it off, and you see it in some other place, you know. So that's part of the men's movement was to um, own our projections. Right? And uh, Robert Bly has a some lots of wonderful audio and, and there's material uh, about that. Anyways, um, so yeah, so this is this video has been about moat beam projection. Um, you know, Alport, uh, the author of the first quote, he does mention that sometimes there is a complete projection where there isn't anything at all about that other person that's true. So the person just made it up. And he 100% projected everything that belonged to him onto that person. And the other person is sitting back there stunned. What? I don't want to have a clue you're talking about. But see, that the projector needs to get in touch with himself. He needs to get in touch with his inside, his shadow. He's trying to heal, right? And uh, so that that's called direct projection um, as opposed to mope beam projection. So I just thought that distinction maybe... Uh, is, you know, I think it's good to make that distinction as a reminder. Okay, uh, thank you very much. This has been. Wish you all. A, wish you all well out there, wherever you are, wherever you are. <laughs> um, the blue, the bluebird of happiness didn't come today, so I was hoping he would show up today. Um, <laughs> if you own your projections, you'll find the bluebird, right? It's within, right? <laughs> This has been TQ30 and 31. Thank you again. Bye, bye for now.